Okay, hello everybody. The next speakers we'll be welcoming onto the stage this afternoon are Bjorn Stray from North Zone and Petri Yarbileto from Seriously. Bjorn Stray co-founded North Zone in 1996. His primary area of focus are e-commerce, consumer internet, infrastructure, and SaaS, and he spearheads the firm's efforts in e-recruitment, e gaming, and telecom services. His portfolio includes, an, in addition, of course, to Seriously, Behabosec, Supernor, iZettle, Brave New Talent, Boom Lagoon, Track ID, and Play Raven. Uh, Betri Erbelato is a creative, chief creative officer and co-founder at Seriously, with a 20-year track record in the games industry. Yerbileto has been in key roles in companies like Rovio and Remedy. Seriously is one of the hottest gaming startups in the world, with offices in both Helsinki and Los Angeles. Please join me in welcoming both Bjorn and Betri to the stage. Thank you. So. Uh since it's a fireside chat, we've, uh, we've decided we'll sit rather than stand. We'll see how that goes. Um, so, uh, Petri, uh, seriously, it's now one of the companies in Finland that has you know, some serious tra traction in a segment which arguably you know, is difficult to break through in. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you know, when you when you started the company and, and uh, how you kind of thought out its foundation, particularly with relation to where, you, where you're coming from, you and Andrew, from, with a background from uh, Rovio? So when we were starting out with Seriously, we started with the idea that um, if you look at mobile gaming today, uh, a single game can reach more than 100 million daily actives. And uh, that type of reach is unprecedented in any form of media. And uh, therefore, we think that some of the biggest entertainment brands of the future are going to be created on mobile platforms first. And uh, having that very clear, very singular vision, this is what we do. We build IP on mobile platforms has been incredibly valuable for us. It, it has literally been the, uh, the one North star, North star that the entire company can follow. And that's made it really, really fast and rapid to get off the ground and start building great products. Uh, if I'm looking at the key learnings uh, from, from my time at Rovio, I think it was completely incredible to see the strength of the brand that, uh, that we had with Angry Birds, how, how incredible it, uh, opportunities it created being able to leverage uh, the strength of the IP, so that's definitely one, one very central, uh, central learning there. Uh, in addition, uh, it was incredible experience in hypergrowth, in how do you scale things up more fast than any of us could, <laughs> could really imagine at the time even, so exciting time, definitely. And, and, and when you say IP, what, what specifically do you mean? With the when, when we talk about IP, we mean the entire world, the characters, the intellectual property. Uh, if you look at our first game, Best Fiends, where, where after a great start we have uh, more than 37 million downloads and the game is driving very healthy revenue. But what you're actually seeing in the game is only a small slice of the world, only a small part of the characters, uh, of the context, the comedy, the conflict, uh, uh, that we built for, uh, for the intellectual property. And uh, that gives us a foundation that we can build on going forward. And, 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 and in that context, how, how do you think that seriously distinguishes itself compared to you know, the enormous competition out there? So, in general, mobile is, as pretty much everyone knows, massively difficult market. It's highly competitive. Every single day, there's more than 700 games released on iOS alone. So the amount of competition is, is stunning. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, uh, being able to differentiate, being able to find our own way of marketing the title has been very crucial. Typical way of thinking about mobile market is that you have your performance marketing, your user acquisition channels, you go, if you're 
CPI is lower than your LTV, then you start scaling up your UA, and, and that's what many of the biggest companies do, whether it's uh, King or Machine Zone or Supercells of the world. And uh, for us, trying to compete with those companies would have been suicide, basically. We would have absolutely lost that competition. So when we were starting up, we asked our friends, asked other companies, what's not working for you? And uh, quite often they would respond with, uh, YouTube is not working, we can get influencers going, but we're not, we don't know how to do that or how to, how to leverage that. So we decided to focus on that. And uh, we've been extremely uh, successful in, in the influencer marketing and building up traction for, uh, on channels that most people haven't been previously using. Can you talk some more about that? Because I think, um, I think what, what's astonished us as investors is, is exactly kind of how you approach the marketing and, and the, you know, the crea creative way that you have executed. Definitely. So uh, we had the idea that um, we consider user acquisition as the defensive play, if you will. It's, it's our way of sustaining any, anything else we do, but it's not, we're not going to win on user acquisition. And then creative marketing for us was the way, a place where we, see, we saw the opportunity to win and win big. So we have been, the problem with creative marketing is that you actually then have to be really, really good at it. You have to really work at it. You have to continuously learn and improve. But we've done, we've worked with uh, uh, some of the world's biggest influencers, whether it's Ellen DeGeneres, who, uh, who featured Best Fiends on her show, or Ariana Grande in, in the US, or PewDiePie, or Markiplier, or, or Rosanna Pancino, or kind of most of the world's biggest YouTubers are people that we've worked with uh, during, during all this time. And it has been, uh, it's been a great experience. Can you... Can you kind of reveal some, some numbers, or is, is that secret in terms of what you achieve on, on user acquisition? Well, if I'm looking at the impact of influencer marketing, we've been number one overall, most downloaded app in France, in Germany, which has recently made it to top 15 overall in, in the US. And uh, it's, we're very happy with the traction we're seeing. And, uh, and uh, can you, you know, if, if you can share something about you know, the user acquisition cost, just to kind of set the effect of creating marketing in, in, in context? For us, the acquisition cost is, is much lower. We would not, first of all, we would not be able to acquire this many users at, at this level of volume that, that we're able to, able to, you know, to drive. And uh, I think when we have a successful campaign, the actual cost of the acquisition is probably like 25% of what performance marketing cost would be. The problem is that these are things that are hard to replicate. Every time we do a campaign, we actually have to build an intriguing proposition for the YouTubers. We have to find something, a new, completely awesome, fresh angle for them to do. Uh, do their shows on, and, and uh, that's something we keep getting better and better. And it's also something that we're building more mechanics into the game, so that we can get them, get the YouTubers integrated. Uh, the best experiences we always have are when the marketing, the game, and the YouTubers are all integrated. Whether it's having them, you know, paint Easter eggs, and then we're hiding those eggs into the game, and then they can do a special feature in, on their channel about that, or whether it's a, a new twist on how, how we integrate Mother's Day into the game, <laughs> or something similar. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you compare you know, how the company has developed and how you see the situation at present with your expectation when you founded the company, what's, what surprised you? Uh, about you know the development that you've gone through. What surprised me, on I think uh, the biggest the biggest surprise, even though you're expecting it, is how fast the market keeps, keeps changing and evolving. It's uh, games in general never stay still. Every five years there's a big transition. Every but uh, if you look at uh, 
the past five years on, on mobile, like uh, five years ago, if you had a great game, that's, that was enough, you could differentiate with that. Three years ago, everyone else started having great games too, so you needed to have a great game and great marketing to be able to cut through. And uh, nowadays, everyone else is starting to have great games and great marketing, so now you need to also have a great amount of capital behind you. And, uh, and it's really intriguing to see where this goes next. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you were to look into the crystal ball, um, what do you think you know, the main challenges ahead are when for seriously? Bigger challenges for us, probably uh, the same challenges everyone else is having, having on kind of, uh, I think we've been very successful with cutting through but uh, and uh, actually getting over 30 million is something that we view, view as a pretty significant milestone. It's, it's pretty easy and free to play to get the initial traction, but the, being able to sustain that year from year is, uh, is uh, uh, quite rare. There, there isn't many companies that are able to do that. Uh, do that. And, uh, I think for us, it's how do we take this to the entire next level? We're in a great place now, but we have to scale this up fast. We have to keep pushing and ultimately in mobile securing, the higher you go, the more you, that success starts feeding more success. So now it's, a, it's really like we have to push to a completely different level from where we, where we are now. And, uh, and um, your strategy has been to launch games into the IP, you know, the, the world that you've created with, uh, with the best fiends. And uh, you've you had one su very successful game, and uh, you've launched a second. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the plans uh, going forward? Definitely. So we started, uh, started planning out best fiends as a property so that we had three different gameplay patterns that we designed the IP for. And uh, the first one is now out there, and it's doing really well. Uh, the second one slated uh, during the second half of the, the year, and we're also very far with the third game, which is launching by the end of the year or late this year. And uh, for us, it's pretty much as exciting time as it can get. And only once we start having several titles out there, then the real value of the IP starts becoming real. So far, the audience out there has only seen this thin slice and, and uh, we get to introduce much more about the, the world to them. It's also, in mobile, this is the first time that we're starting to be able to have network effect. We, can, we have a highly engaged audience that's, uh, that's really enjoying the first game. Once we get the second and third game out there, we can, we can tell them the great news about new options to download even more best, best fiends entertainment. And uh, on many levels, it feels like we've done so much work that's not, not really even uh, kind of the payoff from that work is just going to materialize now going forward. So we're very excited with that. And, and how, do you, how do you go about uh, kind of choosing what the next game shall be? Um, we uh, wanted to have several different gameplay patterns. We wanted to pick our next game is, uh, is built into a clicker genre. And it was an upcoming genre that nobody really owns on mobile. So we felt that it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to establish a completely new type of take on the genre and, and hopefully establish a genre leader. And that's, uh, that's exciting. And, um, and um, obviously, you know, mobile has been an awesome platform for, for gaming. Can you, do, do, you, do you think about, you know, what next platforms can be and, and how, you, how you position towards that? Well, we've already released Best Fiends as uh, we were there for the Apple Watch launch back in, back in the day. Uh, we're constantly looking at new platforms. The one thing, I mean, currently we're 100% focused on mobile, and, and that's where we see, see the big opportunity. But at the same time, again, games never stay still. There's going to be new platforms, there's going to be new opportunities. Uh, right now, if, if I'm looking at variables, that's uh, probably going to, here, uh, going to stick around and become bigger and bigger and bigger every year. 
Uh, VR is very interesting. It feels to me that it's, it's a bit too early on that uh, the devices need to get much more convenient before there's proper chances of mar mass market adoption. Uh, I'm actually thinking AR, augmented reality, can be really, really big if, if the devices, once the devices get down to this level of form size, then, then AR is a wonderful opportunity as well. So we're kind of, we're playing around with all of these devices at the office, whether it's, uh, it's uh, any type of wearable or Google Glass or, or VR headsets. We constantly work hard to stay current on those and see what the options and, and possibilities are on new platforms. Where do you think seriously is in, say, five years? We're working really hard towards establishing the company as, as one of the leaders in, in being able to build IP on mobile platforms and then building that up. Uh, for us, one, one source of inspiration is, is Pixar of mobile. We, we want to create that level of polished experiences on, on mobile platforms and now we've kind of proven that we can actually ship a great game on mobile very successfully. The next step is, is uh, showing that we can do it repeatedly again with the, uh, with the following games. And then after that, the, the next big challenge for us is building up our second IP. But we'll talk about that a little later. Um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about developing a gaming company in Finland? Finland is awesome. It's, it's the world's mobile gaming capital of the world. The, the amount of expertise over here is incredible. There's uh, most, many, if not most of the world's biggest games are made here. And we have an incredible community over here. So we all stay in touch. Everyone knows everyone else. We're all good friends and everyone's rooting for their bodies to break it out big and, and hit it out of the park. Okay, our, our timing is coming uh, towards an end, so, so let me ask you, you know, what keeps you awake at night? Um, I think the answer to that is impatience. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying to fast forward six months forward and see where we are at that point. <laughs> okay. Super. Any questions that you would like to ask me as the last one? Sorry. One thing that could be interesting uh, in general, like uh, from Nordson's point of view, we spent quite a bit of time talking with you. And uh, what got you interested in seriously? Why did you guys invest in, to, in us? Oh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a combination of things. Uh, we believe, you know, we, we strongly invest in teams. And clearly, you and Andrew made a strong impression with your, with your OVO background and also, also your approach to gaming, which we found unique, we, you know, putting IP in the center. Uh, we've got various um, gaming companies that we've invested in, all, all of them with different angles. And I think your you know, very particular development of the character and the IP and the creative marketing, that's what intrigued us. And then, as you recall, we got in touch with you long, long before we invested. And uh, you and Andrew showed us plans, met us again nine months later. You know, and uh, what what actually had happened was pretty close to what you had uh, what you had presented to us, and that creates comfort and uh, credibility. And then, you know, the timing was right for us to sit down and uh, and make a deal, which we're very happy we did because Sirius has been a fantastic performer. Excellent. Great. Thank Excellent. Thank you.